Hey, y'all. Welcome to Marriage Minutes at its pace. And today we are going to talk about anger in your marriage. What does it look like? How does it show up? How is it resolved? <laughs> and so here we go. That's my segue. So, so, so how do you look when you get angry? So when I get angry, I am a yeller and a screamer. I'm very demonstrative. I'm a very reactive person. And so I will blow up before I shut up. But that's the downside of it. When I blow up and if I'm still angry, then I shut down. But there is this explosive part of me that I know that is not healthy. And I know that it's not good for me. I was raised in a in an explosive environment. And so therefore I am plagued by that explosivity. Is that a word? It is now. And uh, I just know that it is something that I need to continue to work on. And I can tell you again, I know you all are probably hear, tired of us saying this, but it's an internal work. It's not anything that Mark can or cannot do. He can help me be accountable to it, but I know that being explosive like that is not healthy and it's not healthy from a physical standpoint, a spiritual standpoint, or an emotional standpoint, but I also know shutting down and being quiet and reserved and holding that stuff in is not good at either. But the way I handle conflict is, is being a shark. I come out to take a bite because I'm angry and I feel like somebody else should feel what I feel. How do you express your anger? And so with her being a Wait, shark. Are you angry right now? No. Oh, okay. Uh, I grew up in an environment in which verbal abuse went on. And so for me, I just, you know, when I hear it, I just don't want to hear it. Because I think grown folks should learn how to talk in a different manner. And I think there's a time and a place maybe for screaming and yelling. Where it is, I don't know yet. <laughs> but um, I just think when you're in your emotions and, and you're there, you don't, your mind is not always in tune. And so you may do things or say things that may be out of character and, and make a situation worse. And so uh, when decibels go up. Uh, do you shut down? probably a good percentage of my time, I'm just going to shut it out and just be like, dude, it don't take all that. Uh, and then sometimes you'd be like, all right, I'm not going to keep letting you just be loud like this. And so I may find myself uh, in the same situation. And so uh, when well, my decibels are up. Uh, and so I think it's just a matter of being true to who you are and, and staying consistent with who you want to be. And so I can't hear? Hey, that's between you and God, man. You do you. Uh, but I, no, you can't yell, man. That, <laughs> I think, uh, but I think you have to just stay grounded. And, and I think when you stay grounded, then you're able to really focus and filter a lot of the tricks of the enemy and a lot of the foolishness. Uh, and at some point we have to make a decision that we're not going to always respond like this, because I think at some point in time, if that's the only way you respond, then you really are really causing more harm and disconnect because now you're just kind of pushing yourself further and further away from the situation, from the people that you love, you know? And so when you really need to scream and yell, it's like the boy who cried wolf. When you really do need to scream and yell, I don't know. That's your only method of communication Then I don't know if I'm supposed to take you serious now versus the 5,000 other times. Mm -hmm. And so you got to think about your effectiveness of your communication and how you may be trying to get your point across. Can you get it across in a lower decibel or can your anger be resolved within yourself and then you present it in a different manner versus it being tied to the emotions or the hurt or the trigger that allowed it to snap off? And, and while I understand all of that, I don't know that everybody is reactive like me. And so I... I I know that, and we've had conversations about this before, oftentimes, because I know that you respond differently, 
my my elevation is to activate you and it is to get you engaged and there's a part of me that that says that uh if he's at least engaging in, in the conversation even if it's a yelling or a hostile situation we're having some conversation about it we're getting through it as opposed to i'm angry and you're shutting down and then there's nothing happening Neither of those are good and neither of those are right. And I think what it comes down to is that somebody has to decide to be the referee, right? There has to be somebody. And I, that's a hard game to play. If you're, if you're on offense and I'm on defense, and then I have to turn around and still be the referee for that. But I think that spiritual maturity in your marriage calls for somebody to say, okay, this is not going well. We are going to stand here at this. Did you want to say something? We're going to stand here at this mark and never get any further if somebody doesn't decide to be the referee and say, okay, let's take a time out. Your hollering and screaming is not working. My being quiet is not working. Let's come back to resolve this truly in 10 minutes or in 30 minutes. But that takes maturity on somebody's part. And I know that I don't do that well. I think in certain situations, if you're if you're looking to trigger me, but you're at if anybody if, if you're looking to trigger your spouse and your spouse is at a certain level, how can you hear anything cleanly enough to know that they're responding to you in a manner? And I think the the key component is to express your emotions or what you're feeling in a manner in which one. What you're doing is I'm responding to what you're doing, but two, how what they did or the situation hurt you. And so, you know, one of the things I learned from my boss when I first started working uh, a long time ago was, you know, never let them see you sweat. Doesn't mean that you don't, one, have feelings and emotions tied to a situation. Uh, doesn't mean that you don't sweat. It's just the fact that I'm not going to let you know that what you're doing is triggering me in a way in which you're controlling me and manipulating me. And so if I can respond to you or learn how to respond to you in a manner that's mature and grounded without elevating, then I'm, I'm still within control of myself, you know? And I think, you know, the Bible states very clearly that too many times we are quick to respond versus actively listening to what a person is saying or having an open heart to hear it all, but we want to get back. And so then that's when it becomes the back and forth versus, okay, you're loud, but I hear what you're saying, you know? And so, like she said, one of us has to, somebody has to be grounded in the relationship and that's not always going to be the case, but you have to be able to come back together because 20 minutes of loud decibel talking shouldn't undermine, you know, 10 years, 15 years, seven years, two years of a good marriage. It just shouldn't. You have to learn how to grow from it and get better. But I also don't want people to feel like their personality and how they respond naturally in and of itself is wrong. Because I think that when we start saying you shouldn't be explosive and I say you shouldn't shut down that because I, I think that is something that is innately in you. And I think that the mature part of marriage says, OK, this I'm this way but my husband is that way. And so maybe we need to have some commonality or maybe we need to come to some compromise and how things are handled. Because I don't, I, I, and I know, I don't feel like you meant this, but I heard this and maybe the little person in me heard this, like because of the way I am, I'm the one that's wrong. And the way I respond is wrong. And and I'm not saying that there's not work to be done in those areas, but I don't also, I don't want people to get the impression that you shutting down and you not responding is right. Oh, it's not. Neither one is right. You being a shark or me being a turtle is, is not effective communication. I, I think the thing of it is, is that you have to know your own shortcomings and you have to have a willingness to at least adjust and adhere to the situation and be present in the situation, uh, as well as adjust 
and adhere and be present in a situation depending on whatever your communicator style is uh, when things get tense in a marriage. Uh, and, and sometimes you have to really think about what are we arguing about? You know, are we really arguing about something minor and very trivial or are we arguing about something else? Uh, and, and you have to really, you know, as your intense fellowship is going on, you have to really let the spirit speak to you and ask you, what is this really all about? And be in tune to that and make corrections because as quick as the intense fellowship is at a certain point, the Holy Spirit is just sitting in the cut looking at both of y'all and I'm like, okay, one of these two are going to hear me talking to them and then they're going to stop it. Okay. All right, I got her today. I may have him next week, but you got to let that spirit pull you, uh, pull that choke collar for you to be obedient to what he's calling you to do versus you having to get your own way. Yeah, I know it hurts. Well, I can, you know, so I, I think there's no right or wrong. It's just the fact that can you be, can you minimize the anger in the relationship and the triggers that happen? And, you know, and this is going to some other lessons that we talked about before, but I think, you know, identify what we really arguing about. And if it's trivial and stupid and y'all just wanted to spot off because you had a rough day, then have that conversation, <laughs> you know, and just be like, hey, I, I really don't really care about that you left a dirty dish in the sink, you know, after I washed all the dishes, I just, I had a hard day and, you know, but Ooh, that starts another conversation, but we can move on. Well, listen, if you don't know what conflict resolution is, or we're talking about shark and turtle and stuff like this, I feel like I had on the same dress when we were talking about conflict resolution and those five animals. So go back in our library and find that video on conflict resolution. I have on the same dress, I think. And you can kind of supplement this conversation yeah. about yeah. anger. Anger. At his pay. Be well, be blessed.